across the globe, from all over the world, touch lives, do the incredible, do the unimaginable, bless people and give them testimonies that will stand out. Take all the glory for their lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you again. Now, let me say this again very quickly. I was sitting down in my bedroom and just meditating. And uh, just out of the blues, this scripture just flashed through my mind. And, and it's uh, Daniel 11, 32. An incredible verse of scripture. When you look at it, you see the first part. Um, I'm sure you remember that scripture. The first part of it which says that um, he that does wickedly uh, to the uh, uh, covenant, uh, he, will, he will corrupt with, by flatteries. I think that's what it says. Um, it, it, it's interesting to me, that part of that verse. I don't know, do you, you have any comments on that? Well, um, it's a very interesting scripture. I was just trying to pull it up here. Yeah. So it says, as many who do wickedly against the covenant, covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. Yeah. Um, I think the, 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 the expression for me there is do wickedly against the covenant. Yeah. One thing we know for sure is that God is a God of covenant. Yes. He has proven that from Genesis up till his work with Abraham, the nation of Israel. And um, wickedness against the covenant, in my um, understanding, is any action that negates God's patterns. I know God to be a God of patterns yeah. and he operates based on patterns. And so uh, I believe that there are consequences when we walk consistently in violation with God's covenant, God's pattern, as touching any area of life whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that uh, for contextually, being that the Bible contrasts it with the knowledge of God, yeah. I believe that uh, the foundation for uh, acting against the covenant is usually ignorance. Ignorance um, of the person of God and his modus operandi, how he operates. Yes, sir. Mm. Yeah, but it, 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 you know, my, my mind goes to First Kings chapter 22, um, verse 22, actually. Yes, sir. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the life, first of all, the life of Ahab. Uh, Ahab. Ahab was a man that definitely acted wickedly against the covenant. That's right. But when you read that First Kings 22, 22, the scripture says there that a lying spirit went in and possessed all his prophets all his prophets now and they began to flatter him and constantly telling him in fact there was a particular battle he was going to with king jehoshaphat and and they, they were lying to him telling him no you will go and you will come you will have victory everything will go well i mean they were just lying spirits and, and, and just flattery, like, like that scripture says, deceiving him, and eventually he died. Now, th there is no way, like you said, there are consequences yes, there are. when you walk wickedly and you do the wrong things against God's prescribed and planned out covenant. There are covenants you cannot violate. If you do that, there are consequences. There may be some of you who are watching right now and, and somehow you have strayed away from God and you are literally doing things that are against the gospel. Now understand that there are consequences, but, but you can repent, you can turn around, you can ask God for forgiveness and God will touch you and turn your life around. You see, you have an opportunity to do that right now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, don't hold on to those things you used to do. You know, some of you know, some of you are ignorant, but as I speak, I believe that God will begin to prick your heart and tell you this is not right. You see, if you are a child of God, somehow you will know Absolutely. when what you are doing is not right. There's that silent voice. Most of the time, we don't listen to that voice. You know, Papa, I'm reminded of someone. Okay. He says, blessed is the man 
yes. who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, yes. nor yes. stands in the way of sinners, yes. nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Mm -hmm. He says, but his delight, in contrast, is in the law of the Lord. Yeah. And he says, on that law doth he meditate day, day and night. night. So the consequence is that he will be like a tree That's that it. is planted. Yeah. So fruitfulness, just adding to what you are saying yes, now, yes, uh, yes, yes. it is impossible to walk consistently violating God's ordinances yeah. and expect to excel. Yeah. It just does not work that it way. It won't happen. Yes. It won't happen. Because our actions are harvests. Yeah. Paul was teaching and he said that he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh yes. reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life eternal. Very true. So the flesh and the spirit are both soils. Yeah. And our actions are the seeds. seeds. And yes. there are consequences yes. inevitably. So I'm just adding to what you're yeah. saying. Very, very true. Yeah. Very true. Yes. And I know that there are people watching now who definitely would need prayer because yeah. you know some of them would want to turn away from whatever they are doing consistently that is wrong. But just in case you are doing what is right and you haven't seen a harvest, it's coming. It is. It's coming because you are sowing and you are doing not, not just money-wise. I'm talking about your life. The way you live, what you do. You are sowing the right seeds and just give it time. You, listen, you will reap a mighty harvest. You know something, Joshua, I would love for you to pray. Oh, absolutely. To pray for people some who are asking God and asking for forgiveness. Mm. But there are some who have been living a consistent Christian life. They love God. Yes, they're doing the right things. Yes, but they are not seeing or they've not yet seen anything. These two groups of people, yes. I would love for you to pray with them. So let me have your attention for one minute. I'll address the first group of people. The yeah. Bible says if we say we have no sin, yeah. We deceive ourselves and the truth is not, not in us. us. But it says if we confess our sins that God is faithful and yes. just to forgive us of our sins yes. and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. And so to those people, I want you to know that the mercy of God is available yes. and provided your heart is open to receive of that mercy. Yes. I stand under this grace and we pray in the name of Jesus Shut that the leadership, Jesus. that 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 prompting of the Holy Spirit Jesus. upon your heart to turn away from wickedness. In fact, Jesus. I'm reminded of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, be not wise in your own eyes. Then it says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. That's it says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He that has clean Amen. hands and a pure Lord. heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully that he shall receive a blessing from the Lord. Yes. So I'm praying uh, over someone right now that yes. the convicting power of the Spirit, whether yeah. you are mm -hmm. following from Europe, from America, yeah. from Africa, in the name of Jesus, yes. I want you to open up your heart yes. in genuine repentance. You may want to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. I believe you are the Son of God, I and I repent repent of my sin Thank you, Jesus. i receive your mercy mm. i receive of your grace yes. and i receive the empowerment yes. to live a victorious christian life Amen. in jesus name we pray Amen. now let me speak very quickly to the second group of people yes. here's what the bible says papa it says yes. let us not be weary in well doing it says for we will reap not every day yes. in due season in fact, scripture says it this way. It says about Abraham that after he had patiently mm -hmm. endured, he obtained the promise. Yeah. So the truth is that sometimes yeah. it takes a while between seed and harvest, harvest. is the word time. Yeah. Uh, there are times that Jesus healed people and the Bible will say as they went. Other times you'll be immediate. So this is a word of comfort to yeah. someone. Yeah. You've been laboring in prayer. You've been giving. Yeah. You've been loving Jesus, yeah. serving in the house of God. Yeah. And it looks like you do not see your signs. Let me encourage you. The Bible says, he that weepeth, yeah. bearing precious seed, shall doubtless return, return rejoicing, 
bringing his sheaves with him. So again, I stand under this grace and we speak to you oh that God. the staying power, the grace to remain in integrity, Jesus. the grace to love Jesus, Thank to you, fear Lord. him, to serve him, to Jesus. pray, to Jesus. give, to do all that you've been doing. Yes. In the name yes. of Jesus, we prophesy. You, Let the power of God move across the Master airwaves Shabu, in the name, name of Jesus Shabu, and bring a speedy harvest, you, a speedy harvest Shabu, in the name of Jesus Christ. You, Amen. 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 Listen to me. The Spirit of God is upon you. Begin to rejoice. Hallelujah. We want to hear from you. Hallelujah. We will see some numbers there. Use them. Uh, send us SMSs. We, we need. We want to hear. We want to hear from you. God is definitely blessing you. As they see Gina there, she, uh, she's from uh, Zimbabwe. Like I said, the daughter also gets in here. I see her sometimes. Uh, different people from different places. And uh, well, I'm so excited. Now let us know where you call him from. Yeah, that's Zimbabwe. That's uh, we have a lot of people from Zimbabwe. Yes, and uh, Ibuku, I see you there. And um, um, Helen Mene, I know you are in the UK. I see Latisha. Latisha is the daughter of Gina. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're both from uh, uh, Zim Zimbabwe. And I see Evelyn there. And I, I thought I saw. Uh, Evelyn from uh, from uh, Brussels, uh, someone from Brussels I saw over there, and so many of you who are who are just uh, making your comments and letting us know. I see someone from Ghana over there. Uh, I see so many different people from different places. We're so glad. But right now, uh, uh, Apostle, we're going to just take a little break yes. and let them bring in some music. Uh, I will say, uh, uh, Jenny, could you could you sing just sing a song and just help us to worship God for a few minutes? God bless you. God bless you. Now stay with us. God is definitely blessing you today. This is a good day. It's a great day. I mean, to to have uh, Apostle Joshua here with us. I am so glad. It's an honor. Sir. It is. Thank you. It's a, it's a special day. All right, Gina, come on, do something. Uh, uh, Jenny, I beg your pardon. Do something, do something quickly. Let's hear you. In this room tonight, we serve a God that is mighty. Nobody's greater. Nobody's greater. There's nobody greater than you. Have you seen any God that is greater than your God? Nobody greater. There is nobody greater, yeah. There is nobody greater than you. Hey! There is nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than the way man. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find one person. Nobody greater, nobody greater, oh, nobody greater than you. I serve a God that is greater. I serve a God that is wiser. I serve a God that is bigger. I serve a God that is greater. From the east is greater. From the west is greater. From the south is greater. In the morning is great. In the noon time is great. I have seen a God that is greater than any other God. Is that your testimony tonight? Can somebody lift up your hands and tell him there is nobody greater than you? No. Cause you deserve the glory yeah. and the honor. Lord, I lift my hands in worship and I magnify your name. For you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I 
lift my hands in worship and I magnify your name because you are sing it to him you do miracles Thank you, Father. I, I, I hope you're with us right there in your home or wherever you're watching from. Just, just keep worshiping and giving God the glory. Give God all the glory. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, listen, where, wherever you are, stay with us. Just in case you don't remember, we're looking at that one verse from Daniel 11.32. Now, the second part of that verse says, and, and it's right there, it says, the people that know their God. So, so uh, Joshua, there, there, there are people who even go to church and don't know God. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, ignorance is never an excuse. But there are so many ignorant people. Yes, sir. Uh, not only could people miss heaven because they are ignorant and are still in the church, but there are people who are suffering today because they are ignorant. They don't know their God. Absolutely. They call him God, but they fear every other thing that looks like God. They live in fear. They can't lift up their head. Before someone threatens them, they, 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 I mean, they can, they can turn away from God any time, any moment. News can come from the village that something, they, you know, any story they tell. You know, I, 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 I had a member here in our church, yes. and, and I was really very touched. I didn't know him until he shared this testimony. Wow. Um, he comes from one of the villages not far from here. Yes, sir. And um, they, one day, it was a member in the church. Yes, sir. Would, was in no, no position, no nothing in the church, but he had been hearing the word for years. And they brought news from his village. Somebody came as a messenger telling him that the chief priest of the shrine in their village said he must come to the village immediately or else in seven days something will happen to him. Uh, you know, and, and this is where the challenge comes. Yes. Do you really know your God? Yes. And, and this gentleman looked at this messenger and said to him, look, I'm going to send you back to this man. Mm. Now, listen. In fact, kneel down, let me pray for you because you brought the wrong message to the wrong person. And, and I want to send you to him to tell him that if he doesn't come to my house in worry in seven days, wow. he will not make it. Wow. Wow. And the messenger was confused. He said, how do I go? He said, if you, if you don't go, then it will come on you. So the man jumped up and went. And when they told the, the chief priest or whatever, yes. he got so angry. He said, what does he make? Does he know who I am? In seven days, his first son died. When he saw that, he came to worry and came to this brother's house and knelt down and said, I didn't know. He said, please forgive me. I didn't know that there was something else that anybody would be serving that is more than what I serve. He said, please, please, please forgive me. I made a mistake. I didn't know. I need you to pray for me. And so he had to pray for him and led him to Christ. And that turned the whole village around because when they saw the chief priest now confessing Christ had removed all his regalia and everything now confessing Christ people in the village there was confusion everywhere most people began to turn to Christ the churches people started flooding the churches but the Bible says the people that know they are, they are God. God. Now, now, Apostle, you probably will have something to say. Here. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of scriptures just walk around yes. my mind. First is Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Yes. Papa, the Bible says, my people. Yeah. Two interesting words. Yeah. This is God my. speaking by the prophet. They are my, my. people, my. albeit they are still destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Yeah. 
my people That's are destroyed. Yes. My people. Yeah. So there are a lot of Christians who are genuinely saved. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely saved. Yeah. But they have not been able to translate the victorious life they've received. You know, they've not been able to translate that victory here and now. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm very touched because this is a core area where I teach believers mm -hmm. how to translate the reality of the God life yeah. to a victorious life. And so the Bible says, having their understanding mm -hmm. darkened, Ephesians 4.18, it says being alienated from the life of God. The meaning of that is that in as much as the believer at the point of salvation yes. truly yes. has received that eternal life, but that the outworking of eternal life, Papa, okay. is knowledge dependent. Knowledge dependent. Yes. First the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. then the knowledge of the principles of the kingdom. So these are the two dimensions of knowledge. John 17, 3. Mm. Jesus said, this is life eternal, mm. that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus whom thou mm. hast sent. Uh, so when people do not know God, mm -hmm. they do not have the confidence to yeah. face fears, the confidence to face all of the onslaughts. Mm. So there are two dimensions to knowledge. Number one is the knowledge of God. Moses, when he was being sent by God to Pharaoh, he said, who shall I tell Pharaoh? I mean, don't send me in this kind of ignorance. Yeah. I know that Egypt is a place of wizardry. I was there. I yeah. grew up there. Yeah. You can't send me to Pharaoh. And God said, tell him, yeah. I am that I am. I it was first a revelation to him. Yeah. Then it became a mandate. So most people do not take the time to know God. And this is where the value of a teaching priest, yeah. a local assembly, a yeah. church, yeah. because he says, I will give you pastors yes. according to my heart, and they shall feed you with wisdom and with understanding. Yes. And so if the people do not have a platform where they can learn God, mm -hmm. the character of God to know who God is. Yeah. In fact, the psalmist says it this way, that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, yeah. slow to anger, rich in love. Yeah. So once you explore the knowledge of God, it builds confidence. There are certain prophetic words, for instance, if I hear, even if it were by an accurate person, yeah. uh, it has no power over me because there's something about the knowledge of God that has shielded me from the effect Very of true. this. That's the story about him telling Yes, you so the gentleman in question yeah. from, from Papa's story, yeah. clearly he has received the word into his spirit. Yeah. And so when a confrontation comes, say from the village, yeah. immediately yeah. scriptures begin to line up in his spirit. That for instance, yeah. we have been raised up with Christ and we yes. have been made to sit yes. with him in heavenly That's places it. far above. And the Bible begins to name them. Yeah. Perhaps yes. someone is going through the same situation right now, right. witchcraft, all kinds of things. Now, yeah. the truth is the Bible does not ignore the reality of this thing. these things. Yeah. However, yeah. the Bible tells us that the believer in Christ has been exalted. Very true. So when we minister deliverance or when we pray, we're not trying to do anything else. We're trying to establish experientially using the forces of victory, the force of the blood, the word, the name, to establish the victory that is already finished in Christ. Right. So I'm just learning from Papa's story to speak to someone. Perhaps mm -hmm. you may be saying things are not working, my finances, my life, yeah. my health, having all kinds of dreams that are clearly satanic, demonic. Yeah. Let me tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus. Shandam. And there is power in, in the Rasta. knowledge of yeah. that name. Yes, yes. Yes. When you know the Lord, yes. you take the time to know the Lord, yes. and then you learn the principles of the kingdom. Yes. Therein lies the victory of the believer. So this is a very powerful scripture. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Papa, if, if you give me a chance, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll still take it a step further. The Bible yeah. says, but the people, that means not everybody will be part of that victory camp, but the people that yeah. do know do know. Mm -hmm. Then it says they are God. They are God. It's interesting that it never even said the people who do know the living God. It just says they are God. Yes. So whether it is the, an occultic practice, any kind of practice that has to do with confidence in a deity, he's saying a man's confidence is derived from the God that you know, oh. be it an idol, be it whatever it is. Now, because we are believers, we are talking of the one true God, right. the That's living it. Christ. It. But it says the people who do know, they are God. Yeah. Then it takes it a step further. It says they shall be. 
I like that. Yes. So it starts with knowledge, then transformation. That's it. That's it. That's it. So it starts with knowledge. Now I said that because there are many people who have gone close enough, sir, to the realm of knowledge. But one thing about knowledge is that knowledge is an acquisition of information. It Very does true. not necessarily translate to victory. In fact, the Bible says through wisdom a house is built. By understanding it is established. It says through knowledge the house are filled. So the assignment of knowledge is to gather together the information that can translate to victory. But in itself, it may not necessarily produce victory. Right. There still has to be a few other processes. That's yeah. why the scripture does not stop there. Yeah. There are a few people the Bible talks about. It says ever learning. Yeah. So they are not lazy. They are yeah. not ignorant. Yeah. It says, but, but never, never come me into the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. It, it's really, it's, you know, I, my mind just goes to Second, Second Kings, I think it's Second Kings 13. Yes, sir. Abijah and uh, Jero, 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 Jeroboam. And you know, when you look at that scripture from verse 1 to up to verse 5, now, the Bible tells us that Abijah had 400,000 men. Jeroboam had 800,000, double the size. Yes, sir. And yet, he was so confident. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not just information. Wow. This has translated into an experience. That's right. He knew what he was talking about because if you keep reading he, he he listen when i read this many years ago i was frightened for him wow. four hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand this is madness mm. how do you confront this kind of man but but then he came out and he said ought ye not to know mm. in other words jeroboam you are supposed to be wow. a jew that's right you know the scriptures mm. You know, you know Amazing. that God mm. has given the kingdom of Israel to David mm. and his sons forever That's right. by a covenant of salt. He said, you ought to know. So listen, so if, if you know, then you should know that I will defeat you. Absolutely. I mean, you don't have a chance in this thing. Absolutely. So I'm going to defeat you. He's certain I will defeat you. You can have a million, two, three million soldiers, and I still have my 400,000. I will defeat you. Papa, it was the same confidence yes. that David, as a young shepherd, yes. sent to go and feed the scared warriors yes. when he saw Goliath. Yes. Now, Goliath was a man, the Bible takes time to meticulously describe his stature, yeah. and the nation of Israel were warriors. Yes. Saul himself was yeah. a warrior. He was. And yet, when <laughs> David saw him, he said, I'm able to take this man. I will. And then when he finally was allowed to stand before Goliath, yeah. Goliath said, am I a dog? You yeah. come to me with your... I mean, now I, I will... I mean, what, what sort of thing is this? Yeah. That you, you use a sling, am I a dog? And David said something yeah. very boldly. Yeah. He said, you come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in a name. I have a covenant and I understand the implication of that covenant. In fact, the Bible puts it beautifully this way. It says, by you I can run through a troop. It says, by my God I can leap over a wall. Now that's a very, very, I mean, he uses a, a very interesting expression. How can one man run through a troop? Yes. By you. Yeah. Perhaps this is a prophetic word for someone, someone who is following. Yeah. By you, you may be alone, but in the name of Jesus, any man with God yeah. is already a winner. That's you it. can fail alone, yeah. but you and God cannot fail. You yeah. are indomitable sure, team. Don't go, go, I can see. fail as a preacher alone, no, but see. not with God. When no, no, with no, God, I become a team indomitable, in a team invincible. Perhaps you. someone, God asks you to connect to this meeting yeah. to encourage you. You yeah. think you are alone because you've been overwhelmed by the situation situations here but just listening to this conversation i want you to know that if you would pay the price yes. to know the lord yes. pay the price yes. to learn the ways of god your yes. victory will be incontestable yes. this is for sure in the name of jesus amen of nazareth amen father amen. we just give you the glory thank you jesus that everyone and anyone watching and following this right now 
the spirit of God and the spirit and the grace that is here comes upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So Amen. be it. So be it. Amen. You know, man of God, I will, I will, will take a few more minutes yes, again sir. and let them sing another song. Uh, one of my one of my sons, uh, Taiwo, is Ta Taiwo. Let's hear from you. We'll let him sing and bless us, and then we'll be right back. All right, stay with us. Stay with us. Happy knees are Lord, you are a help. You are help. Our stone of help. Our stone of help. Happy Nizay. Happy Nizay. Happy Nizay. Happy Nizay. So the knowledge of God does something to you when you understand it and you begin to practice the knowledge of God. Right. So it's, it's not just knowledge as information, right. like you rightly said, yes, but knowledge that translates mm -hmm. into experience, into practical things that come up in life. If you say you have the knowledge of God, and when these problems and troubles come, right. and you are trembling and crying mm -hmm. and you know confused, then the, all the knowledge you say you have That's means right. nothing. Absolutely. But you must be able to take all that knowledge and let it translate mm -hmm. into something that is practical in your life. So the people that know their God shall be strong. Now, Apostle, I, I, I don't know what, what, we, what, what you see here. In fact, the Bible says it this way, Papa. It says, if you turn again in the day of battle, mm -hmm. the simple reason is that your strength is small. 
Yes. So the ability yes. to not continue yeah. is a direct product of weakness. That's it. And the Bible says that when a man knows God, the yeah. word strength there yeah. does not just mean Maybe physical phys strength alone. Right. It, it means capacity. In fact, it translates to the word, it has the same root expression, confidence. So it's not just limited to strength, maybe emotional yeah, strength. Yeah. It, 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 the people that do know their God, they shall be confident. Yeah. Confident yeah. in facing life. Yeah. Confident in, in pushing the purposes of God and yeah. driving their destinies to fruition. Mm -hmm. uh, fear is a product of ignorance. Sir. At any level. Yeah. Finances, fear of finances, fear of health. I mean, I have the honor of sitting with you here. I mean, uh, to know that to know that at this age you are still vibrant. It looks like you can run faster than me. <laughs> I'm sorry to I be that expressive. That. But, but <laughs> you can imagine this level of strength. And we're talking of camera. Yeah. I just said, yeah. Baba, you have the spirit of might. Yeah. So you can imagine this kind of thing. I mean, that a man can tap into the knowledge of yeah. God and it can translate into capacity. Yeah. You can see wisdom, extraordinary wisdom. Mm -hmm. Daniel knew the Lord and yeah. even the king confessed that an excellent spirit, spirit that strength yeah. there. Yeah. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in yeah. Daniel chapter 3 mm -hmm. from verse 26 down to 31. The Bible tells us that they were thrown into the fire. In fact, here's how they said it. They said, oh king, we are not careful to answer you on this matter. Our God will deliver us and he will but even if he does not, not we will not bow and they were thrown into the fire yeah. sometimes sir, i wonder why god did not save them from getting into the very fire. very interesting very interesting but they got into the fire yeah. and they maintained their stand their confession their conviction god, even in god, the midst of god the fire. was in the fire waiting for them hallelujah <laughs> and as soon as they were there the bible says the king looking carefully said yeah. i see a fourth man yeah. looking like the son of god and then their bands were loosed and here's what the bible says yeah. that these were men that the fire had no power over as a result a decree was passed literally all over the land that's it that no man no man who accuses the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he will be cut into pieces. His family will be made a dunghill. Right. Then the Bible ends by saying they were all promoted and elevated. In the name of Jesus. Because of you, mm. nations will bow to Hallelujah. you. Because of you, Hallelujah. cities will bow. Because Hallelujah. of you, villages, of Jesus. communities Shabala, will Shabala, believe in this yes. God. Because of some of you that are listening right now. The Lord God translate and change, Amen. turn around Amen. your weakness Amen. and turn it to your strength. Amen. In First John chapter five, yes, sir. verses fourteen and fifteen, yes, sir. The, the the Bible says this: it, "This is the confidence mm. that we have in Him." Mm. And I love it yes. that if we ask anything according mm. to His, His will, will, He heareth us. Absolutely. Then He says, "If we know." Mm. If we know, yes, it means if you don't know, then yes. <laughs> you, you you go no further with this thing. He said, but if we know that he heareth us, then we also know that we have our that petitions. we have the petitions right. that we have. In other words, you don't even see the answer before you know. Hallelujah! Because you already know, mm -hmm. you are confident mm -hmm. that the answer is there. It's done because knowledge gives you a clear understanding of what belongs to you. What is yours that you don't see doesn't mean it's not yours. It's yours but you don't see it yet it is yours. And as long as you have spiritually believed that you have it, eventually it's going to manifest. Papa, you yes. just quoted Mark 11 and verse 24 in a very interesting way. So uh -huh. here's what it says. Yes. It says, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, then he says, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have it. He uses two expressions. Yeah. One, receive, yeah. and then two, have. Receiving is a spiritual reality. That's it has nothing to do with evidence. In fact, faith is the evidence. Yeah. So we receive in prayer, That's it. and then we have experientially. That's it. You can never have what you do not receive. That's it. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. So when we ask, we receive, receive, then we have. That's Maybe I should say that again. That when we ask in yeah. prayer, yes. then we receive by, by, faith, by faith. 
and then we have it in experience Hallelujah. and that to us is a product of knowledge that's true. because if you do not know what is available Hallelujah. for you mm -hmm. You are not even going to be able to place a demand by faith. By and if you do not understand the working dynamics of the kingdom, mm -hmm. this perhaps for someone is even a revelation yeah. that the thing you think you do not have, you've already received Shut it. The and the manifestation is just on its way. And I'll tell you why there's a delay between wow. receiving and having. I know this is a bit of digression, but I just feel led no, to say not. this. It's not. It's part of it. Uh, to receive is spiritual, but to have is men dependent. Mm -hmm. It depends on systems and structures and the operation of men. Right. I'll give you an example, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, I believe, the Bible does not record it, but I believe that um, Joseph had a conviction in his heart that he would come out of that prison. Mm -hmm. And he had a dream as a witness. That's it. And the Bible says the wine presser, he advocated, he said, wine presser, when you get to the king, please tell the king I'm innocent. Yeah. But the Bible says the man forgot. For two years. Because of one man's forgetfulness, he added two years. So sometimes the delay comes because the men component who need to work out God's purposes together, the limitations that come yeah. with their alignment. That's this it. is the reason why we pray, yeah. is the reason why we receive prophetic words, That's because it. these are systems of advantage. The Bible calls God the father of spirits, yes. meaning he has influence over every human spirit that can work out his plan. Yeah, yeah. very true. Yes, very true. Now, listen to me, wherever you are watching us now, and, and I see a lot of different names now, like, as much as well, I see favor for Malaysia, I see right there, and um, uh, there's so many people watching from diff different places, I see someone from the US right there, I see someone else from, uh, I'm trying to figure out, Zimbabwe, no, Zimbabwe is all over the place, <laughs> they are everywhere, I see them. Uh, um, let me see who else is here. Latisha, you're there. Grace, I see you. And um, I'm looking on both sides. I'm trying to figure out all these names. Uh, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many names. Uh, Andre, you know, sometimes so, some some viewers will later write and call and say you didn't mention my name. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard that many times. You know, I really would want to mention your name but sometimes i can't i see someone from, from atlanta georgia yes. i just saw that flash i don't know if you saw it yes. uh, but the people from all over the world and, and i'm i'm telling you some of the things that apostle uh, was just saying applies to you now you receive before you have absolutely you know and there, there is this time of receiving there's a difference between receiving and having but th that that period that season you have to understand that it, 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 it's a it's 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 there's a time frame but that time frame doesn't affect you because you see as far as you are concerned you have received absolutely and you are working in what you have received absolutely. and what you have received eventually becomes what you have in fact sir, the bible teaches us to be thankful yeah and thanksgiving was designed by god to be to fill up that space yeah. between receiving and, and having. having. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. Mm -hmm. Then it says, with thanksgiving, mm -hmm. let your request be made. So once your request is made known and you've received by faith, yeah. you keep giving thanks yeah. whilst you wait for its manifestation. That's it. That's it. We, we pray that there will be manifestations Amen. in Amen. your life. Amen. There are some of you waiting for a baby, waiting to, to be able to pay for that house, waiting for sicknesses that are in your body for the manifestation of your healing. There are people going through difficulties, hardships. There are people, all kinds of affliction, difficulties. And in the name that is above every other name, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak into your life. I speak into your body from your head to your toes. I speak into every tissue, every vein, every blood vessel, every cell, every nerve, every organ, every bone and marrow, every joint. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. My goodness, I, I, I feel the power of God coming on you. 
wherever you are, I'm, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is working and moving and healing and setting you free right now. Just keep praising God for breakthroughs, for miracles that are happening. Apostle, we, 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 we'll just take a moment again and let them just come with a song and stay with us wherever you are. We'll just take a little break again, one more break, the last one, and then we'll begin to round up gradually. And I see all kinds of people, Tinoma, Augustine, um, Helen, um, Apos, Fabian, um, um, you know, I think Latisha and the mother, they've taken over the whole thing. I'm, I'm so glad. Zimbabwe. I see you there everywhere. I see um, Mel Melodia. Melodia. I see you there. And uh, Grace uh, Olayinka. I see you. God bless you. And so many of you. So stay with us. I think at, at this point, we'll ask uh, our Taiwo to come again and, and sing a song and while we just worship and then we'll come back to you. So keep keep pressing your share button and just bring in more of your people. Let them participate. Let them be a part of this great move of God. God is definitely blessing us. Come on, time. Jesus, yeah, you have done it again. Jesus, yeah, in your special way, what was impossible. Baba, you made possible Jesus yeah. Everybody say Jesus yeah. You have done it again Jesus yeah. In your special way What was it possible You made possible Jesus yeah. Jesus, yeah, you have favored me again, no, oh. Jesus, yeah, in your special way, what was impossible, you made possible, Jesus, yeah, if he has favored you, you will say, Jesus, yeah, you have done it again. Jesus, yeah, in your special way, what was impossible, Baba, you made possible, Jesus, yeah, Jesus, yeah, you have done what no man can do, Jesus, yeah, in your special way. What was impossible, Baba, you made possible, Jesus, yeah. And now to the world, Jesus, yeah. I hear, I hear you, you have done, done it again, again. Jesus, yeah. In your, your special way, what was impossible, you made possible. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh my God, we thank you. We give you praise. Thank you for manifestations. Thank you for many families, for homes, for bodies that are healed, for miracles, for breakthroughs, for all kinds of things that are happening across the globe. In different parts of the world, we give you praise. We magnify you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. You know, Apostle, was, well, this is the last part of that verse. Like I told you, I was sitting, just minding my business, just meditating, and then this scripture flashed through. And, 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 and whenever these things happen to me, I believe there are people Absolutely. that God wants to bless, not just me. Yes, for me first, yes. because I, I received it. But, but, but then, I believe there are many people out there. The last part of that verse says, and, and they will do exploits. I, I think that's incredible. Amazing. That's incredible. Amazing. Would you want to say yes, something? Absolutely. About it? I, I like the word do. 
Yeah. There are people who talk about exploits. Uh -huh. There are people who wish exploits. Uh -huh. There are people who desire exploits. But the Bible says yeah. the only ones who will do exploits. Yeah. Reminded again of uh, the statement between Mary and Gabriel. Yeah. It says, blessed is she that believes. Yeah. For unto her yeah. there shall be a performance yeah. of those things that yeah. were spoken yeah. by the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so... Uh, here's the dynamics of exploits. Number one, it starts with knowledge. Knowledge. I, I will repeat it again. Please let me your attention now. So knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. The knowledge of God and then the knowledge of the principles, principles. of the kingdom. Yeah. It matters that you access these two dimensions yeah. of knowledge. Yeah. If you are just connecting, just tuning in, and you did not follow our discussion, yes, yes. please hear it is. Yes. That this scripture, Daniel 11.32, the yeah. B part says, but the people, not everyone, the people, people. it didn't even say Christians, yeah. but the people, people yeah. obviously believers, but serious believers who are yeah. committed yeah. to their destiny, That's it. that do know their God. It starts with the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. and then the Bible says they shall be. I like the word be. be yeah. It's a word that connotes transformation transformation yeah. allowing the word to do to walk through, to walk through. Yeah. and then it now says as a result they shall do exploits i believe that there are two principles sir that are responsible for the manifestation yeah. of the spoken word in the life of any believer the bible says the word became flesh i like that statement yes the word became it's a process it became flesh yes. And there are two principles that I'll share on, on this, uh, this, this broadcast very quickly. Number yeah. one yeah. is the first way we translate spiritual realities yeah. to become experiential manifestations yeah. is by engaging the ministry of prayer. Prayer is one of those platforms that has been given unto us yeah. by God to yeah. translate desires, to translate realities, to translate that which is finished in yeah. Christ mm -hmm. and to make it manifest in our lives. Yeah. The Bible says you, ha you ask not, you have not because you ask not. And the place of asking is also the place of prayer. Mark eleven twenty four. Mm -hmm. it says, what things soever ye desire, desire, when ye pray, pray. not if, when ye pray, pray. Matthew 7, 7, it says, life. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door oh, shall be opened open unto you. It says, for everyone, my God, the blessings that come from prayer is for everyone. For everyone that asketh, receive, receive it. it. Everyone. Everyone that asketh. But I like something the Bible says. It never said for everyone that asketh, have it. It said everyone that asketh, receive it. That means there is something else that needs to be done between receiving and having. And this is the second part of my admonition. Yes. Number one, prayer. Number yes. two, obedience. Obedience. I cannot emphasize this enough. There are many prayerful believers yes. who are not obedient believers. Unfortunately, you only have the readiness to judge every disobedience if and when your obedience is complete. If it be thou, Jesus said, sir, bid me come. And he said, come, sir. He never said, Peter, come. He said, come. Yeah. Anyone at all who heard that word had a right to act it. upon it. But the only one who experienced that testimony was the one who acted upon. If he had said, Peter, come, then any other person who walked on water would be walking in disobedience. Right. But he said, come. come. The same way he's written this truth with no name. Yeah. It's there for everybody. everybody. Yeah. Whether it is your finances, your health, your marriage, yeah. your, 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 your education, yeah. your business, whatever yeah. it is, you can lay claim on these promises. Yes, yes. The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. It says that by this we might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So the key here is, number one, to press for the knowledge of God. Yes, yes. And the knowledge of God demands action on your own part yeah. by the truth. Yeah. There are books, for instance, yeah. so many books that you've written. There are messages. And any believer who desires to know God must press to get these materials and then build your capacity. In ignorance, you are defeated already. Very true. That's the truth. In ignorance, you are defeated. Yeah. The Bible says he called the light day and the darkness he called night. Yeah. So light is not a chronological oscillation of no, time. No, no. any time you have light, 
Even if it is 12 midnight, it you is called day for you. Yeah, that's it. And you can be 12 noon and yet be in darkness. <laughs> he called the light day and the darkness he called night. So here's my charge to everyone. Number one, press for the knowledge of God. Number two, press to learn the principles of the kingdom. Yeah. And when you do, your next port of call is to engage in prayer. Yeah. Strategic, fervent, yeah. effectual prayer. In fact, the Bible says it this way. The fervent and effectual yeah. prayer of the righteous. righteous. Not any kind of prayer because there is praying amiss. Yeah. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, yeah. sir, but I'm sure you will agree with me yeah. that many zealous believers pray amiss. Yeah. Their prayers are not heartfelt. Their prayers pray. are not word compliant. Yeah. And so they engage with a lot of energy and zeal and sincerity, yeah. but it is not potent enough to deliver. And then, in addition to prayer, you must add obedience. John chapter 2, the first miracle recorded according to John's synoptic account, yeah. the turning of water into wine. Mary told them something, and this is what I am telling you, yeah. whatsoever he says to do. He says, do it. Not think it, not wish it, not want to do it. Just do it. Do it. And he says, all right, since you are ready to do, fill six pots with water yeah. and then go ahead. Don't verify, don't cross-check, be on your way to that's, the rulers. That was a suicide mission. Right. Because if they met the rulers and there was no miracle, I mean, that They're would be finished. embarrassment. They're yeah. finished. They're finished. And the Bible says, as they went, not before, yeah. as they went. Yeah. The signs follow in honor to obedience. There are so many believers who pray alone and they do not walk in keeping. Obedience is powerful. Yeah. Finances has kingdom laws, for instance, that bring a person into abundance. If you know it, if you pray and you don't obey, it will not work. Will work Divine health yeah. has laws and principles, the yeah. hearing of faith. The Bible says men live by bread and by the word. So if you live by bread alone, you will most likely not live long. Right. Because there is another component to living you are ignoring. That, that is true. Yes. That is true. You see, you know, this issue of obedience is heavy. Yes, sir. It's heavy. You, you remember David? He had, he had, he had, uh, 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 the, he was in Ziegler. Yes, sir. He had gone out and tried to help uh, somebody else who was not part of Israel and all that. And uh, they, they got back and Everything Everywhere. was gone. Their Everywhere. wives, their properties, everything taken, you know. And they wept. The Bible said they wept until they had no more strength. And it was just a waste of time, waste of energy and everything. You know, I'm talking of obedience. Absolutely. Now, now they, 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 this was a fellow that knew God. Mm. But here he was weeping and wasting his time. In fact, they wanted to stone him. Absolutely. The same people right. who went with him. That he came with the men he had been with were not they wanted to stone him then it occurred to him he said look i'm, I'm not doing this thing right mm -hmm. then the bible says he went to god mm -hmm. ah, he ought to have done that all along absolutely and then he asked should i pursue mm -hmm. will i be able to overtake overtake and, and god said yes he said pursue overtake and mm -hmm. recover he didn't even ask of recovering mm -hmm. anything but god said and recover all and he went on the journey interestingly there was a young lad that god had planted that's right already waiting that would help him to get to these people who are taking everything mm. now he, the reason he was weeping the reason they sat there was because they just couldn't imagine these people had gone three days ahead so there was no way they could catch up with them but now god had done something this young lad was waiting yes sir but they, these people themselves got somewhere and stayed and they were dancing and drinking and celebrating. But in the real sense, they were waiting for David to come, to overtake. God, look, this God, if you are prepared to obey, oh, you, you, you've got Absolutely. to make the move. Absolutely. You, you must move, make the move. If you are sick, you must begin to speak and speak your healing and declare the good help. That's right. You know, by his stripes we are healed. You must begin to work out that thing. You must begin to do something about it. Don't sit there. Right. There is there is a place for obedience. You know, I'm I'm just taking that your word. You cannot you can't do exploits if you are not ready to obey. Absolutely. It is when you Absolutely. obey what God has spoken, Absolutely. the revelations Absolutely. and the directions Absolutely. of God. You can't sit 
there and expect things to happen. Absolutely. You've got to start moving. Absolutely. You've got to follow it, do something about it, and then you begin to see God bring breakthroughs and miracles, and God does incredible things. And I believe so strongly today that God brought you to be with me here today. And everyone watching, God will do something special for you. Amen. Apostle, I will want you just to pray because we are running up. We are, we are done actually in a sense. I will want you to pray prayer for the people and I just, I'm just going to say one or two things and then this thing will come to an end. Absolutely. My prayer will be twofold. One, for the grace to believe God. Yes. Yes. Many people have lost hope. Perhaps you are watching, you are following, you are connecting and you are saying, Apostle, we have toiled all night. Yes. We toiled all night, we've, we've cried, we've prayed, and I want to speak to you that it pays to trust the Lord. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. Jesus, it says, Jesus, Jesus, um, when the Lord turned again the captivity Jesus, of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. You may think you're in captivity and there's no possibility mm -hmm. for deliverance, not with God. No. Once you come to the realm of God, all things literally yeah. are possible. Yeah. But they are possible at the instance of your engaging in prayer yes. and your engaging in obedience. In yes. fact, it says there remained a rest yes. for the people of God. Exactly. That they heard the word like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. Then it says, now that ye know these things, yes. he says, happy or blessed are you if you do them. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, ah, Jesus. I join faith with Papa Ayo, and in the name of that Jesus, we shine. speak, we prophesy right. across the airwaves shine. to, shine. to shine. a mother trusting God for a miracle, shine. to a father trusting shine. God for shine. restoration, shine. to a brother shine. and a sister trusting shine. God for healing, shine. to someone who has lost, uh, you know, shine. maybe your ministry, you've lost hope, you've shine. lost a job, shine. you know, struggling with cancer or whatever it is in the name of Jesus we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit the Bible says there is hope for a tree that even if it be cut off at the scent of water it will burn again we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit son of man he says can these bones live again financial bones live again in the name of Jesus health bones live again perhaps it's your education live again I prophesy to to someone live again. I think you should speak that to yourself. Yes. Say, I'm rising again. I live again. I'm rising again. I live again. In the name of Jesus, I remember not the former things, nor consider 